Hello everyone, and it's Halloween time. What I thought I would do is I would show you the brand new Nightmare Before Christmas reaction figures, and these were sent to me by Super 7, so I want to thank Super 7 so much for sending me these to review. They sent me the set, and they are incredible. Now, I, I, I put my little, my little Jack, uh, scarf on but i can't keep that on because it's way too hot i just thought i would wear it for a brief second um i don't know where all my nightmare shirts are i have tons and tons of nightmare before christmas shirts here's the first three and then there are three more these are the big these are the big guys actually and here you go there have been many, many, many figures released from Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, there have been reaction figures before, uh, but these are really, really cool. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. So what I'll do is I will unbox and we'll take a closer look at them. These were given to me by Super 7, and I want to thank them so much for sending me these to review. Nightmare, of course, is one of my favorite movies. I mean, Roger Rabbit being the first, but anything and everything Tim Burton, who doesn't like it? There's, a, there's always a Tim Burton movie out there for somebody. I, there's so many of them, and they're so good. First, we've got Dr. Finkelstein, and you can see this is a big bubble compared to, like, the regular figures. They did not skimp. They made sure he was secure in there, and... He comes with his wheelchair and everything. So I'm really, really, really happy to see. And again, uh, as I had mentioned before, uh, everybody was saying uh, that they saw my review for the Roger Rabbit figures. And based on the review, they actually bought them and agreed with everything I said. And I'm really, I'm just happy about that. I don't, I, I review them to be honest. I don't, you know, I, I want to be honest about everything. First impressions, you know, just, just how the figure looks and everything. Again, the, the cards are a really, really, really good quality. And, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Now, there's, there's so many nightmare figures now. So, you know, you can get a whole bunch of them. You don't have to leave them on the card. But they are really, really impressive on the card itself. So if you wanted to keep them on the card, but we're not going to do that. We're going to actually open them and do a proper review and see what they look like. All right, here is Dr. Finkelstein, and oh my gosh, his head actually opens. Oh my God, that's perfect. I can't believe that. They, they put that little detail in there. So here is Dr. Finkelstein. You can see he looks just like the puppet. He is right out of the movie. There's a lot of little small parts here that I'll point out that you're going to want to be careful of, but he looks great. And you'll see he comes with a wheelchair that does actually move. There is one small wheel in the back, though, that is not movable. So you'll want to be careful about that and the handrail in the back. They are very thin as well as these little knobs. They are not movable, so you want to be careful when handling those. Now, he is removable from the chair, and there is a detail that they added on that I'm so happy. This little cut shows you that it opens at the top. You could see his brain. It's on a small hinge, but I'm so glad they added this feature. Now, the head does rotate fully, and so do both arms. I had no problem moving them at all. Now, the legs are stuck together. They don't move, so you won't be doing anything with those. But he sits mostly in the chair. You can see the limbs are tiny, just like they're supposed to be in the film. He's got the little glasses, the gloves. It's absolutely perfect. The accessory that he comes with is this skull. It's from a scene in the film when he's making himself a new friend. She's actually nicknamed Jules She's from the very end. Hopefully we will see that character in one of the future waves. And then we have Pumpkin King Jack. And he looks really, really good. Again, these are like just the, the whole presentation of them is really, really impressive. 
the cards are not cheap, and it makes a difference if you're going to collect them and leave them on the card. They will look really good, and you know they, they should stand the test of time. The torch, and it is like a clear, it's like a clear plastic. And he is so super skinny. Very, 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 very skinny. So I'm having a, a much better time moving these than I did with the Corpse Bride figure uh, the figures. They were a little harder to move, the, the joints and such. But these, the Nightmare figures, are actually much, much easier to move. Now here is the Pumpkin King himself, Jack Skellington, as he appears in the beginning of the movie. This is his namesake. This is what he looks like every Halloween, this crazy sort of scarecrow with the pumpkin head. You could see Super 7 went all out. They put the rips in the sleeve and the jacket. It really looks great. Now, I had no problems with the limbs. They moved. The arms were great. The head was great. Now, when I was trying to move the legs, they were much like the Corpse Bride figures, where it seems like they're stuck together, that they have to move together up and down. They didn't want to move independently, and I didn't really force it. Now, that's not a bad thing, except he doesn't really want to stand. It would make it hard for him to stand anyway with that big pumpkin head. He's just so top-heavy. But he does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet, so that could be used to stand him up. He comes with a torch accessory that has a clear flame at the end, which looks really, really cool. And it does fit easily right into his hand. I had no problems with that, and he holds it very, very well. So this would display really nicely on a shelf. So I actually have a comparison between the older Super 7 and Funko design that was from 2016, and of course the newer one that was just released. You can see there are some differences. The height difference is very, very obvious. The Super 7 one is taller than the older one that came out. And there is some color variation in the jacket there, even in the pumpkin itself. Also, the accessories are very different. The older one has a much thinner, much smaller accessory compared to the newer one that just came out. The newer one has that clear flame. The older one is painted. So you can see they can kind of fit in scale a little bit together, but one is definitely much taller than the other. All right. So now I'm going to open. This is my favorite, favorite character. This is the Undersea Gal. And they've made a couple of figures of her as well. And I was surprised to see her because I, I didn't think they were going to make her so soon. I thought maybe if if later on down the line kind of a thing but it's already series two and they made her so i'm really happy to see that now she does not come with an accessory which i found interesting is she the only one i think she is of this wave but there are other figures in the other wave that um didn't have it like the harlequin demon did not so maybe like the secondary characters just are not going to have an accessory that they come with so she moves at her arms one was loose one was a little tight but not that bad her head moves very very easily and then she's got one bit of articulation there and oh i don't know if that's going to move all right it does so you can have her probably sit down. That would look really good. And I'll say, again, the feel, of, the feel of these figures, you might have heard this, the feel of these types of action figures is very different from, I think, what we're used to. Like the ones back in the day from like the 80s, they have a very rubbery feel. And sometimes that wasn't very good because that, those plastics would degrade and all that. But these figures have a like a harder quality like a, almost like a resin or something like that so they don't have the same feel but they're so, not supposed to degrade they're supposed to last uh, a little you know a bit longer than say other figures do
So here is the undersea gal. She is my absolute favorite character in The Nightmare Before Christmas. She's in the background, but she gets some prominent face time and gets gets a few lines in there as well. Now she looks really cool. All of the little scales are sculpted on her face, the mohawk, fin. She looks great. Now she does not want to stand and she does not have a peg hole. So that is a little bit of a problem, although on a flat shelf, she did balance, but if you knock into her, she's going to probably fall over. Now, I had absolutely no problem moving the arms. They moved just fine, and also the head rotated completely easy on its own. She does have a cut at the waist, and she can sit down. So if you wanted to possibly display her on a shelf or with the other characters sitting, she's not going to fall over. You can just leave her like that. The one other thing is that she doesn't come with any accessories, it's just her on her own. I wish she maybe came with some small little thing, but she really looks good. She sculpted great. I can't complain too much. Like I said, she's my favorite character. I can't believe we got her so soon in Wave 2, and they really did an amazing job with her. And the next one we've got is Locke. So they're in there really secure. They're, they're, they're in there pretty good. Oh, and he's got a little devil tail, so you want to probably be careful about that. So here is Locke of Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Hopefully we'll get the other two soon. But he looks great. The one detail you might want to watch out for is the tail. He's got this little devil tail that curves upright. Now, his face looks great. It looks just like the puppet with that evil grin there. He actually stands up on his own just fine, and I had no problem moving the head. It moved easily. The arms as well, they moved up without any problem at all, but the legs don't go all the way up. His little shirt here kind of cuts down a little low, so the feet only go so far, but other than that, they all move very, very easily. Now, he does come with an accessory. It is the mask, of course. Now, the mask does not sit on his face. It doesn't rest on there or clip on or anything, so he can't actually wear it. But his hand is sculpted to actually hold it. It goes in there very, very easily. So you can display him at least holding the mask up close to his face. I think you can get more detail in on this harder plastic than you can with the softer plastic, obviously. So... We have got the Wolfman here, another background character, and he is one of the bigger figures here. He's a much, much bigger figure than the other one, so let's just like look him and look at Jack. Like there's, a, there's a huge difference in the size comparison there. Oh, it does not even feel like his arms are going to move at all. Oh, they did a little bit. <laughs> that made me really nervous. Okay, so it, it does. With, with a little bit of work, it looks like it, they'll move. Now, the legs, same. They're, like, a bit tight. He does have peg holes at the bottom. And the head is also, like, really tight. So I'd be really, really, really careful so here is the Wolfman. He's another one of the background characters who's become more popular over time. He gets a couple of lines and some songs. So you can see it's sculpted very, very well. He's got the teeth there, the back of the rips in it, and the pattern of the stripes on the shirt. It looks really good. I'm very impressed. You'll want to be careful of his tail. We'll get to that in a minute. But he looks really good. He doesn't stand perfectly. He does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet. So you'll want to be careful. He can kind of fall over. Now, his joints were really, really tight. The plastic was cracking. The head barely wanted to move. The arms, you can see, it just was so tight. I was afraid to move. This one barely was moving. And he's a hollower plastic than the others, so that might be a bit of a factor. Even the legs didn't want to move too much, which hinders him from standing up perfectly. So something to just be aware of. Now, 
he also has this articulation in the tail, I guess up if he's happy to see you, down if he's angry, so you can move his tail around. But his face and all of that, the detail work on him is really impressive. Now he does come with an accessory. It is this bone here, put in whatever joke that you wish, but it is a little off-white bone accessory. The problem I had is that he absolutely cannot hold it. The nails on his hand, the forefinger and the thumb, they're together. So there's no way that it would go through there for you to be able to hold it. It's just not gonna work at all. And if you go even to the other hand, it's not sculpted to hold anything. It's in an open position, it doesn't go in the mouth. So there's not much you can do with it. Maybe there's another character who can hold it. But other than that, the figure is pretty good itself. To the last of the six characters, which is Oogie Boogie, another of the larger bubbles, larger characters here. And he takes up pretty much the whole card. Now he actually stands up well on his own. I'm kind of surprised because he does have the small feet. He does have the peg holes at the bottom. And like the Wolfman, it's a bit of a hollower uh, plastic here. So the joints are very tight. His arm does move. So does this one, but he's holding the dice in this hand. So there really isn't much you would do with this hand. You kind of just leave it like that. And then his legs, <laughs> I could already tell like they're very tight. And I don't know that you would do anything like that. He can maybe sit. You can hear it like cracking, so I don't think I'm going to move that. I'm just going to like leave it. So here is the villain himself, Oogie Boogie, and he looks really good. Honestly, there's been so many figures of him by now, recreated I don't know how many times, how many different variations. But this one in this scale actually looks really, really good. Now, he stands up fine on his own, so you shouldn't have any problem with that. But he does have peg holes if you want to use a stand. The arms moved okay. They were a little bit tight. Both move fairly well, although this hand has the dice in them. So you really wouldn't want to move that hand upside down or anything like that as he's supposed to be holding them. Now the legs did not want to move. They were cracking a little bit. I was afraid to do anything too much with those legs. And it's not like he's going to sit down. The plastic is hollow, just like the Wolfman, and his head turned fine. It was actually the easiest to turn out of all the limbs, so that was not much of a problem. And I guess there's only so many designs you can do for a character when he's just a great big sack. Now, he does come with an accessory. It is so tiny. It's this little purple bug. It's going to be very easily lost if you're not careful but there isn't too much you can do with it really you can maybe put it next to him it doesn't go in his mouth or anything like that but i was able to get it on his shoulder really you're not going to want to leave it there because one one false move and that bug is going to be going flying right off your shelf so here's a comparison between the older funko super 7 version that came out in 2016 and of course the newer one now the Super 7 Funko one almost seemed like it was bigger, but they really aren't any different in scale. They are about the same size. They're just made a little bit differently. You can see the height difference. The newer one goes a little bit taller because of the peak of the fabric there, but they are pretty much the same, a hollow plastic. They have, you know, the patterning on the fabric. They're both big. They have their big bellies. It's just that they're both done a little bit differently. They both look very evil and menacing together. Now, the accessory for the older one was this Sally leg, which looks pretty funny, I have to say, in his arm. And speaking of Sally, here is the older 2014 Super 7 Funko reaction figure of Sally. This is her next to the newer Jack Pumpkin King. And she scales in fine on her own. There was a newer version that was just made by Super 7. And here she is with the newer Oogie Boogie. So these older ones do scale in pretty well. Here is the original Jack from 2014 next to the newer Oogie Boogie. That is all six 
of the new Nightmare Before Christmas reaction figures, Wave 2 by Super 7. Uh, let me see if I can get some of them to stand up a little bit. They may not want to. <laughs> they may not behave. And they really are so cool. I mean, I, I love all of uh, Tim Burton's movies pretty much. And this is, I think, I think this one's my favorite. I mean, I like a lot of the other ones. Like, I like Ed Wood. and You know, there's, there's Beetlejuice. And, uh, you know, I would love to see Beetlejuice reaction figures. Like, a full series from, like, the movie. But these actually look really, really good. And I can throw in Roger and Jessica to do a little, a little comparison. Let's do a little comparison between Jessica and the undersea gal, even though they are so quite different. They're about the same height, funny enough. Uh, undersea gal has this like mohawk that's happening here, and that is about the same height. And you can see that the Tim Burton joints and limbs, they are the smaller, on the smaller side. That's just like how they are for Corpse Bride. The Corpse Bride figures were very, 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 very small. Uh, the, the limbs and the joints and everything. I put mine back in there because I, I wanted it to be safe. <laughs> so, but these mix very well together. So I think if they keep this style for all of Tim Burton stuff, it's all going to work. I think the ones that came out a couple of years ago, that was the collaboration with Super 7 and Funko, I think they're a little more on the chunky side as like actual old school figures. So these are different in that they really kept with Tim Burton's style. They didn't, they didn't change the limbs to be too big. They kept them very thin. So you want to be careful about that. But they seem sturdy. They seem sturdy enough, even if the joints are tight with some of them. They seem really, really good. And all the paintwork, I think, on all of them is really, really, really good. I mean, there, there's you know some paint slop here and there, but with the smaller figures, that tends to happen. But honestly, they really look very, very good. So these are the new action figures by Super 7, reaction figures for The Nightmare for Christmas, Wave 2. So they are now available. You can go to super7.com and get them. You can buy them individually or you can buy them as the whole set. So again, I want to thank Super 7 for sending me these to review. They're really, really cool. I, you know, any kind of Tim Burton characters I'm down for. I'm always so excited to see stuff like this, especially when it's the background or lesser known character. We have tons of Jack stuff. We have tons of Sally, a lot of Oogie Boogie, Lock, Shock, and Barrel a little bit, but we don't ever see the background characters as much like Undersea Gal and Wolfman and the vampires. We're starting to now, but it's always great when they're made into actual figures, especially for this scale. I do, do like this scale for the Nightmare figures uh, a lot more than say maybe like the bigger kind. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me, and hopefully there will be more soon that we can take a look at. And until then, have a good night.